everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and being a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on social media by these handles, uh, mostly as newleafdesigns.nl. And I have a couple of things to show you today. I have a finished object. I have a new pattern publication, which I already showed you last week, but now I actually have the magazine. And I'm podcasting earlier in the day. It's like 2.30, I want to say. Okay, almost 3. And it's still light enough, so yay! <laughs> um, so... But first, I want to thank all of you who shopped my hand dyed yarn sale update uh, from last week. Um, I created a separate Instagram account. Um, I have been dyeing yarn in the past. Um, I think I haven't put them the yarns up for sale this whole year, and you know I'm. I already made the decision that I wasn't going to go through it anymore. But I still have some leftover stock. So um, I put those all up in a yarn sale. There are still some yarns available, but I will be uh, taking them off the Instagram site uh, or off the account um, next Friday. So that is tomorrow. Um, I hope I can get this podcast edited in time so that it goes, uh, goes up on Thursday. So that's also tomorrow if you're watching this when the podcast comes out. Uh, so yes, Thursday the 27th, no, Friday the 27th will be the very last day you can shop the update if you want to grab some of my last ever hand dyed yarns and they are all naturally dyed. Um, you know, I had a lot of fun dyeing it, it's just not something I want to do anymore. So yeah, last chance. I'm shipping worldwide. Uh, all of the details are on my Instagram page, which is for this occasion, it's New Leaf Designs Yarn. Um, yes, and you can find everything there. So as I said, I have a finished object and it is the beret, uh, which I haven't shown on the podcast as a uh, work in progress because it is totally new. So I cast this on last Thursday. And I actually cast it off on Saturday, I think, yeah, Saturday. It was just so much fun. And um, <laughs> on Instagram, I did a couple of polls because um, you start knitting, well, I'll show you the beginning. So, <laughs> so you start knitting at the little tail of the beret. And for the first 80% of the hat, it kind of looks more like a boob than a beret. So I had some polls on my Instagram stories like, is it a boob or is it a beret? And uh, is it a beret now or is it still a boob? <laughs> and yeah, that was kind of funny. But, <laughs> but now it's actually a beret. And uh, the magic happened as almost always with blocking. So yeah, whereas I wasn't so happy with blocking last week or two weeks ago, uh, I am very, very pleased with um, the blocking effect uh, on this hat. So this is the Beast Beast Beret by Sari Nordland. And uh, it's a paid pattern, but um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. I knit it with three strands of lace weight. So one strand of this, which is Gould DK in their Scottish lamb's wool base. I think it's discontinued, but they have uh, a new base in a uh, in the same thickness. So this one is 650 meters per 100 grams. So that's, yeah, it's like a lace weight. Um, I don't know what their new base is called. I think it's like number four, something like that. Uh, but it's very, very good yarn. And um, I used two strands of mohair to get a nice halo. And this is mohair by Sandra Scraffulness, who is no longer dyeing any yarn. And yeah, this was one of the very last skeins that I bought from her. Uh, so I, um, this, I wound the mohair into two balls. And um, yeah, 
use two strands of that uh, because I wanted to create one, a thicker fabric, and I wanted the fabric to have more of a haze so that hopefully it will it would obscure the uh, increases a little bit more because um, on some of the finished uh, projects on the Ravelry page you could really see the lines you, you can kind of see if, if I tilt it in the light but um, I don't really like that I wanted it to be as smooth as possible and um, when I blocked it, so I washed it in the sink um, and I scrubbed it a little bit with just hand soap and um, I, th I don't know if that helped um, but it certainly looks very very good right now uh, the only thing I wish is that I used a smaller needle for the um, eye cord because I did that very loosely I think that is due to um, my experience with West Knits patterns <laughs> because uh, Stephen West who's not the designer of this hat but uh, Stephen West uses uh, a lot of eye cord uh, for his shawls and other things um, and he knits so loose, you guys. I mean, I knit loose, but he knits... It's, it's just... I can't. <laughs> uh, so I've trained myself to knit eye cord super loosely because uh, for his patterns, it's always used in the edge. And um, I have one shawl, the first one that I... Um, the first mystery knit along that I ever followed from him. And... The beginning eye cord is just, it's not stretchy enough. And <laughs> I think uh, because I've trained myself to knit the eye cord super loosely, I think that is why it turned out very loosely here. Um, so yeah, but I don't think it matters that much because it is loose on me, but the recipient has a slightly larger head, so it might just be perfect. But, um, yeah, so I'll try it on. I have some pins in my hair, so I have to be careful. So, <laughs> I have never worn a beret, so it's, um, I have to get used to, well, this is for someone else, but <laughs> my bangs are too long. Um, so I think you wear it um, with the bulk of the hat thrown to the back so that you kind of see these waves here see that and then uh, you kind of see the edge of the beret on the back and I'm gonna turn for you Ta -da -da. I really really like it and um, yeah, you could wear it like this too, like a painter, like this, <laughs> like a Scotsman, <laughs> like Dougal Mackenzie, um, although uh, he had a much bigger beret and no tail on it. Yeah, or like a, like a chef. <laughs> so many options. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, I, I honestly really, really like it and I've never seen myself as a beret person. And um, I don't think anyone sees themselves as a beret person, actually. But um, the sister that I'm knitting this for, um, so one of my sisters-in-law, she is actually an artist. Uh, so I don't know if she actually owns a beret or if I just see artists and painters with berets. But um, yes, I thought she would really like it. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I hope she will appreciate it and not think of it as a joke. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I really like it, so I hope she does too. And uh, my mom was here yesterday. We had a little crafternoon. And um, she saw my beret, and she has never worn berets. And she was like, can I try that on? And um, it was a little bit too big for her because, if you'll remember, my mom has a head like a baby. Um, and she was like, can you knit me one, but like smaller? 
and um, yeah, so it was um, a big success and I hope the recipient will like it. So let's see what that does with the board. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been watching too much Taskmaster and they always say like, let's look at the scores. Sorry, <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing. All right, so the beret went from not in progress at all to done. So I'm going to mark that as done. Look at that. Ta-da! <laughs> the board looks in order again, which is very pleasing. And now all I have to do is one hat, two bow ties, and a mystery thing. And I may or may not just gift my mother-in-law something that I have already finished, such as, uh, you can't really see it, but um, I have a pot holder there that I punch needled and um, needle punched, punch needled. Anyway, um, and I think she might really like that, or I might um, make her a similar one because I think she's already seen this one on my Instagram. Uh, now I have blocked all of my gift recipients on Instagram, so they're not seeing any posts of mine, but um, I think she might have seen the one that I've already made. So... Um, I've actually cast on another beret <laughs> because, yes, I need more stuff on my plate and more, more whips on my needles and, yeah, I blame Thundernet. I blame Caroline. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Caroline is the host of the Knitting Vicariously podcast and she is hosting the Blame It on Thundernet or what? Blame it. Blame Dundernet. Blame Dundernet along. Gosh. Okay, she's hosting the Blame Dundernet along again. And uh, which just means that, um, you know, in this period of kind of mandatory knitting, uh, like gift knitting, and oh, I have to finish this, and um, you know, you're trying to finish the year with clean slate or whatever. And um, she said, well, we all need a little, just a little cast on or a little yarn purchase now, uh, once in a while, and you can blame it on me. So I thought, yes, that's an amazing idea. I'm going to cast a beret on for myself <laughs> because with, with each hat that I'm knitting, I'm like, I want one for myself. <laughs> I've done that with the home hat. So with the very first color work hat that I knit was for uh, a gift recipient and then I thought, okay, I, I want one for myself. So I knit one of those with the brioche hat. I was like, I want to knit one for myself, but I don't have any suitable yarn at the moment. So that was postponed. And now with the beret, I'm like, I want one for myself. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean... Am I a hat person? I guess I kind of am, but um, I'll stop talking. I mean, I'll, I'll stop rambling. Uh, so I've cast on a beret and I'm actually almost finished. And now you can kind of see the, um, the, <laughs> is it a boob? Is it a beret? The, um, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you ain't gonna wear a beret like this, no. The, the magic <laughs> really happens during the blogging. So, um, I'm almost finished. Uh, the, um, the break line, if you will. I'm gonna have to close that door. There, that's better. Um, so, the um, kind of, yeah, the fold line, that's better. This line is going to happen around here but you don't see any of that because it isn't blocked i'm already decreasing i'm uh, i think about to do the second decrease round and then it's on to the i cord which i am going to try with a smaller needle now mm -hmm. i'm knitting this i'm knitting this on a 3.5 millimeter needle 
I think I did the same the same uh, needle size for my first beret, but I'm using a thicker yarn now. So I'm using this all my own hand dyed yarn. This is my Wool Rami Sport Weight Base, which I love. It's 80% wool, 20% Rami. Rami is a plant based fiber. Um, I think it is metal or something like that. Um, and it's super strong. It's also called Nature's Nylon. Um, so this would actually be a sock yarn. Um, but I've only used it in sweaters and this beret so far. And this is also my hand dyed mohair. And uh, these were in the same dye bath, or at least it's the same colorway. Um, and I think they look really nice. So this is sport weight, this is lace weight, so it's a bit thicker. Um, thicker fabric than this beret. But I actually quite like that, so it's kind of more substantial and I hope it will um, maybe keep its shape better. Uh, not that this one doesn't keep its shape, but um, yeah. So I am... Um, very excited. I mean, I love this color. Um, it matches most of my clothes and my shawls. So I think I can combine it with most of my outerwear. Um, it looks ridiculous right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just really excited to cast this off. I think it will be today or tomorrow. And then I can show you on next week's podcast. So again, if you want to get some of my last ever hand dyed yarns, I don't have this color anymore, but I do still have this base um, in uh, avocado, in yellows, in um, coral. So um, have a look. Um, and this project bag is by Teen and Meep. And I love it. I love it so much. So. That was one of my whips. Um, I did work on another whip, and that is my Cozy Moment Shawl. Surprise! <laughs> so you might remember my Cozy Moments shawl pattern. And I've already finished one sample. And this is in uh, Skippy Swirly Gig teal to ombre colorway. It's a beautiful gradient yarn cake um, with wool and alpaca. It's, it's just gorgeous. It's amazing yarn. Um, yeah, I just, I just really, really love it. Um, but um, the original was in Scapia's Whirl and I haven't finished that version yet. So, and I've made some progress, although I'm, um, I don't know exactly where I left it. I think it was somewhere around here so that I've added this much. It's a huge blob right now because it is a lot of stitches on 80 centimeter needle. And um, yeah, but again, this is a gradient yarn cake. And I love the colors. This is the Kiwi Drizzle colorway. And it goes from olive green to lighter and lighter and lighter olive green to light blue and then darker blue and now it is going back to green and I am doing the seventh lace section now and um, yeah just one more lace section to go after this and um, yeah so I thought I was just 
I was just in a mood of, of finishing things because you know hats are very quick and um, and I was finishing hat after hat after hat and I was like yeah let's finish some other stuff so um, I got this one out and um, and I want to free this needle because three millimeter is what I use most these days So if you want to knit the Cozy Moment Shawl, um, it is suitable for beginners, although I wouldn't have thought, <laughs> but a lot of people have actually knit this as their first um, knitting project, which totally blew my mind. Um, uh, Scapius, um, the yarn company and me, we uh, hosted a knit along or a make along earlier this year. And we knit through these lace sections. There is one cable section there. And I have videos on this YouTube channel. You'll find a playlist for it, uh, which is called Cozy Moments Mal. Uh, Mal stands for Make Along. The pattern is available for free on my blog. Uh, so newleafdesigns.nl, you can find it as Cozy Moments Shawl, cozy with an S. And uh, you can also buy the PDF. So there's a free version, there's a paid version. Um, the free version is split up in four parts um, because it was, uh, well, it wasn't really a mystery make along because the uh, pattern was visible from the beginning. But uh, each week a new section of the pattern would come out. And um, in the blog post, I've pasted the um, videos in there, so it's super easy to follow. And um, yeah, a lot of people have joined in. There are over a hundred projects on Ravelry, and it's just amazing seeing all of the people joining in. Or this this was a mail from February, but I'm still seeing um, finished objects pop up in my Instagram feed, and. Um, or people knitting a second one or a third one <laughs> and yeah it's just a lot of fun so I am happy to finally be finishing mine or picking it up again to finish it because um, yeah these are also my colors green and blue yes so a little bit of progress but um, progress is progress so I'm happy with that, um, especially if you have a whip that has been lying in, in a bag or in a closet for months. You know, the first time that you pick it up again is always the most difficult. So I think now it will be easier since I've uh, gotten the hang of the pattern again. And actually I should mention that I'm wearing one of my own design sweaters. This is the Around the World sweater. Uh, which is also a free pattern on my blog. Uh, it was published earlier this year in May. And uh, on my Patreon page, there is a masterclass where you can follow um, videos to knit this uh, sweater step by step. I will show you how to do short rows, how to do color work. Um, but the pattern is for free on my blog, and you can get the paid PDF in my shop. So it's Around the World Sweater. And I'm actually planning to knit a new one or a similar one. I don't think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to adapt the pattern a little bit. Um, and I'm going to knit that with my advent calendar. So I have ordered a advent calendar, um, so a yarn advent calendar. So from uh, December 1st to the 24th, you open one packet of yarn every day. It's so much fun. Um, or I think I've never had a uh, yarn advent calendar before. Um, I think at least. No, I've never had a yarn advent calendar before. Um, and I've ordered one now. And I've ordered it. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you the inside. Uh, I'm just going to show you the packaging. Um, I've ordered it from uh, Walmart Verve, uh, who is a Dutch indie dyer and one of my favorite dyers, actually. And her yarn advent calendar it comes in this custom bag. So it says Walmart Verve. 
and um, oh, I'm so excited. I haven't even peeked inside, so <laughs> I'm just keeping it in a box. And but I know there are 24 mini skeins in there, and well, they're not really mini skeins. There are 20 grams each, so that is quite a lot of yarn actually. 24 times 20 is 480 grams, so it's almost five full skeins. So I could get a total, uh, I could get an entire sweater out of just that yarn. But I actually want to knit a sweater with just a colorwork yoke and then uh, plain knitting for the rest of the sweater. I was looking at the base of the yarn and the base um, in the advent calendar is 80% merino and 20% nylon. And I have some yarns so some full skeins in my stash and I'm planning to use one of those to use for the main body of the of the sweater and I hope that I will be able to use this one which is um, also from Sandra's craftfulness on her spoil base oh it's the same base it's 80% merino 20% nylon I don't know if it's from the same place that um, you know they buy their undyed yarns from but um good chance that it is and this was her very very last colorway it's called last dance um it's a beautiful soft blue minty green um with uh, dark blue speckles and then some gold uh, mustard brown speckles and also some orange and I love it so much. Um, I don't know if one skein is going to be enough for, you know, the main part of the sweater. I don't know. And I don't know if it's going to match the colors in the yarn advent calendar. So I'll have to wait. Um, I mean, of course I'll have to wait because I want to knit it top down. So uh, I'm going to be starting with the minis. Uh, but... Wool uh, Fever, she had two uh, themes for her advent calendar, so two different color options. One was uh, bright, bright and something, uh, so very vibrant colors. And the one I picked uh, was called Earthy Whispers, um, which uh, were earth tones and uh, pastels. And I thought, yes, that is more me, I think. And I think, or I hope this one would fit with that, but I'm not sure yet. I do have another, um, I have two other skeins in my stash that could fit. So this is also 8020 uh, merino nylon. And the way it feels, I think that these dyers may, may have gotten it from the same place. Uh, and this was from uh, Berenbolle, who is also not dying anymore. Um, but, um, yeah, she dyed beautiful yarns. Um, uh, this, this one is called First Love and it's mostly, uh, pinks with some gray and black here and there. And this could fit. I mean, there's pastels in there, so this could be a good, um, pairing as well. And then I also have some, um, this was actually a sample skein from the place where I was um, buying my undyed yarn wholesale. And it's their Corydale sock. And I dyed it with avocado to just see how it would work. So I'm not sure if the composition is just says Corydale sock. I must have it in an email somewhere, but it's very high twist, and um, yeah, so I know it has Corbeil in there, <laughs> but um, it's a very pretty yarn, and I don't know, I thought I might want a speckled one as a main color for the sweater, I might want a less speckled one, but a little bit more color. Um, or a very neut neutral, non-speckled one. Yeah, 
I, I do think this one might be too thin because this feels a little bit thinner than these. But so those uh, are my options so far. And I think uh, once I unpack the first couple of mini skeins that I will be able to see um, some other skeins in my stash that might fit with, um, with the color palette. Um, but yeah, I'm just really excited to get started on this sweater because um, I want more sweaters and I'm gonna blame Dundernet for that one as well. <laughs> I have one more thing that I have been working on, but it is not yarn related. Um, and I will put some clips in uh, because... or wait, I can actually show you this first, but I'm sure I'll put some clips in too. So last year for Christmas, I bought this for myself and I also bought one for my mother-in-law because she loves miniature things. And it's one of those, I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram ads or Facebook ads, or at least I've seen a ton of them. Um, but they are miniature like rooms, kind of like dollhouse style rooms. And this is by Row Life. R O life and I could not resist it was too cute they had a Black Friday sale so I shopped around this time last year they might have another sale this year um, and it's just <laughs> it's so cute y'all so um, I am in the process of making this and I thought I would bring one piece upstairs to show you, and I'm going to be showing you the um, lamp shade. Can you see the lamp here? The one. Um, I have just <laughs> made that one <laughs> earlier this week. Look how cute that is. <laughs> yes, it's very, very cute. Um, the only thing I would say, because I'm using just handicraft glue for this, I really need super glue because you often need to um, glue together like wires and stuff. I mean, look at that chair. That looks horror. Like, it, it just, the way I know that black uh, thread now, I mean, it's some kind of, um, uh, it's some kind of wire with a uh, plastic film over it. It's like electricity wire or something like that. But, um, and then sometimes they just want you to glue, like, to snip off the wire and to glue the end onto something. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> so for, there's this desk. And I, I'm just not, just like computer says no. Uh, or glue says no, rather, um, because it's not working. So uh, there's no glue in the uh, kit because I don't think you're allowed to ship glue um internationally like liquids it's it's just you know it get caught up in um in customs too long so they, they just leave it out uh which i don't mind um but i really need to get out and um get some uh super glue because <laughs> it's just not happening so uh that's also what i've been working on and i'll put some more clips in right here uh, of the things that I've already made. So um, the wall, I've had to paint that and the little windows, uh, there's some plastic film that goes at the back. It's just, it's so cute and it's so miniature. Um, it's, it's mostly paper though, uh, wood and paper. And um, I'm, I'm not sure how that holds up. And also, I don't want to be dusting this um, with all it little, uh, the little components. I don't want to be dusting it, but um, we'll see how it works. Uh, I'm really excited about the little 
lamp at the uh, at the top because that has a real working light in there so that will be very cute and we have a wooden um cupboard or closet or whatever you want to call it in our um living room with kind of these uh, wooden um it's not an ikea thing but it's like <laughs> You know, you could put a square box in there, like, um, and I think one of these rooms would look super cute, fit into one of those um, spaces. Right, and then the publication that I was talking about is Inside Crochet, and their issue number 130? Yes, 130 just came out, and it looks beautiful. It's very wintry. It's kind of like a fairy tale theme. Um, there are lots of beautiful patterns in here. I'll just show you the um, overview page. I'm not sure if you can actually see, but there, as always, there are lots of accessories, garments. I hear there's this. Um, there's a Christmas wreath but with goldfish. Here it is. So this is by Quan Yin Cheng. Um, I'll put her Instagram handle on the screen. She, she does really um, just not, not your usual crochet and it's just very very fun. Oh here it is, yeah her Instagram handle is Studio Mania. Um, yeah, just really, really cute. Um, and, but that was not what I was gonna, gonna show you because I have a, um, pattern in here that I have shown you guys last week and it's my metamorphosis shawl, um, which you, sh you start off with a base yarn, um, with a base shawl pattern and then you crochet embellishments on them. So here you can see the full shawl and here are some of the uh, baubles and slip stitches. Another beautiful photo. And then here is the column that I wrote. It's always so fun to see. <laughs> um, Oh, and here's a pic of me wearing the shawl. And I have a shawl right here. So I showed you last week, but um, I'm going to show you again. So the metamorphosis shawl with bobbles, surface crochet, so slip stitching, and tassels, tiny tassels and big tassels. And yeah, it's just super fun. <laughs> and now the magazine is out. So you can get Insta Crochet, well mainly in the UK actually, but the digital issue you can get them just online. And um, I got a subscription so um, I get the paper version delivered every month and um, it's actually, it's quite on time actually. It's just maybe like uh, a couple days later than the um then a couple days later than the publication date that was what i was gonna say but it looks it's just a great great magazine and um i'll be in there some more times so uh if you want to get a subscription um i really really recommend this magazine um i think it's sad that a lot of um, like how do you call them news agents in the, in the Netherlands don't carry this magazine um, I think because there's no Dutch version of it but I think the English version is easy enough to follow yeah but you have to keep in mind that it's published in the UK so they're all UK crochet terms in there so a TR is a DC and yeah <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I just really like it and I wanted to show you guys again. <laughs> uh, 
and I, th I think I'm gonna wear this shawl in spring a lot because it is kind of a uh, cottony fabric although if you uh, it just depends what the base shawl is what you um, what you want to embellish uh, so this is a more this is a, a escape piece linen soft so a more cottony feel so this will be amazing for spring yeah but yeah I just wanted to show you guys again and I will be uh, publishing the pattern so this one in a couple months time when I um, when the copyright is returned to me so yeah and I think that was all that I wanted to share for this uh, this week's episode so um, it's still quite early in the day so I might uh, finish editing this podcast on Thursday actually and today is also Thanksgiving, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, happy Thanksgiving to those celebrating in the U.S. And uh, I know because today is Turkey Day on uh, Animal Crossing, <laughs> so I'll be um, I'll be playing that later. Um, but yes, thank you so so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you for becoming a patron on my Patreon page because that is the ultimate supporter and cheerleader of the podcast. Um, and yeah, I just really appreciate you all. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello? -bye. <laughs> oh.